G'day humans, Chris Dead here. Today, I'm at the St. Regis Maldives Resort. And in this video, I'm gonna give you a full review and a full tour of everything to expect in this beautiful, beautiful little piece of paradise. Are we there yet? No! Are we there yet? No! Are we there yet? No! Are we there yet? Yes! I just want to preface something at the very start of this review, and that's that it took me a little while to kind of understand the St. Regis Maldives. And potentially the brand as a whole, I don't know. This is the only St. Regis I've stayed at. But at first, it didn't have that knockout factor that I was expecting when I got here, right? I was expecting to get blown away instantly. And so I want, as you go through this review and you listen to my pros and cons, all of which I stand by, you know, there are, there are definitely negatives and there are definitely positives. The, the negatives are very tangible. You know, they're, 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 they're issues with some of the build quality, the, you know, the things you can touch and feel and see. But the, the overriding positive here of the St. Regis Maldives is actually its soul, and it's not particularly tangible. And I'll speak a bit in this review about the intimacy and the warmth of this small island and this small amount of people that are here enjoying this moment in paradise with you. And I think it's important to keep that in mind through this review that while there's definitely positives and negatives to the tangible things that you will come across here in this resort, <coughs> the overriding positive is just that sense of warmth and, and uh, companionship that you get from talking to the chefs one-on-one, -on -one, from talking to, from, from the experience you have from your butler. It's very personalised. You feel like you're having this one-on-one -on -one interaction. You're always sitting around people that you instantly recognise because there's only so few people here relatively. You know, that you're constantly coming across the same people and experiencing that same moment in time with other people. So I want you to keep that in mind because there's a soul to St Regis and the soul is actually the most luxury experience of it all, more so than the actual tangible things. You know, and I was... Last night was my last night here, well, obviously the last night I had here. And you know, I'm about to go on a plane and leave right now. The most magnificent sunset. And I'm sitting on the beach and I've just been talking to this person who works here and that person who works here and this person who I've seen at five different dinners and you know, and, and watching this sunset together over this magnificent pool and this magnificent beach and this, this unbelievable reef that's just teeming with life. And over this, over this wharf bar, it's just this architectural marvel that just, just yawns out into the ocean and I was sitting there going, all right, I think I'll finally get it. And it took me a couple of days to really understand that, that this place is selling itself on its soul. Uh, so look, let's dive into the full review. But I, I shot the review kind of like, and I realised as I shot the review, I was really focused on that tangible side of things. And I thought it was important just to note as I go through the pros and cons of this experience that there's this underlying you know, warmth to the St. Regis Maldives and the people that are here, either as guests or as hosts, that really makes the experience. So right now I'm standing exactly where you'll land on your seaplane. So you get here by seaplane. So that's one of the, I guess, positives and negatives about the place. The, the negative is it's going to cost you a bit more to get here because you've got to go on a seaplane, you can't just do a transfer by boat. But the positive is it means you're more isolated, you're further away from everyone, it's a bit more private. Now over here you're going to see a little uh, landing spot down there, that's where your seaplane is going to roll straight in. So sometimes at these resorts the seaplane will land like further out there somewhere and you're going to transfer in, not here. But it was really kind of cool, the seaplane as it came in, I mean the seaplane itself is an adventure right? But when it came in, it literally came in low and then flew right around the island, banked all the way around the island, gave this kind of really cool view of everything you're about to experience before you landed. I really enjoyed it. And it kind of landed on this side of the island.
Now you get off to a very white lotus -y. You know, lots of people there know your name. They're all waving, saying hello, making you feel very welcome. Big coconut drink as soon as you get in. All that kind of stuff, it's, uh, it helps make that stay really special, really luxurious. Now it's a very interesting resort, this one. You know, it's obviously the St. Regis. St. Regis is a very, very big name. It's a very, very luxury orientated name. Uh, and there's a special certain expectation uh, when you come to a place that says St. Regis on it. Now I had not stayed at one before and I didn't know exactly what to expect. And it's definitely hit the mark in some places, but in other places I've been surprised. Uh, at, at, you know, where it goes with its decor and, and, and finishes and stuff wasn't what I was expecting, but we'll get right into that. So it's a, it's a man-made, sorry, this is, this is not a man-made island, so there are some and a growing number of man-made islands in the Maldives that are popping up everywhere. This is not the case here, this is a natural island, uh, and it definitely makes a difference as we're going to go through. So anyway, let's jump on the bike, I'm going to ride, oh look at that, it's got some new, new arrivals. Perfect timing. All right, let's go on the bike and do a tour. So over there is your little intro booth where you kind of sit in the shade when you first get here. We'll get out of the way of that uh, landing. Kind of interesting timing, kind of perfect in a way. So as you can see straight away, nice, beautiful beaches. This is a peach of a day, this one. Really, really lovely. Probably about 31, 32 degrees, small breeze. The water's giving that lovely Maldivian blue to it. Very, very cool. So one of the huge positives, like I said, about this island is it's, 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 it's out of the way. It's a while to get to. It's private. It feels very, very private. And it's small and easy to get about. Now, I can't underestimate this too much for you because on all the islands, you can be riding a long way to get from A to B. Here, as you'll see, everything's really easy to get to, and that makes it, just means you spend more time actually enjoying stuff and less time getting from A to B. Uh, they will give you bikes, as you can see, but um, uh, you can get buggies everywhere as well. So here is the Oriental, Orientali, I don't know how to pronounce it, but this is the, we're gonna find some Chinese food. There's also a Japanese teppanyaki. Uh, so that's what you're gonna find in there. Let's go have a look. Okay, back on the road. So the thing about being a natural island is you get all this wonderful greenery, big, thick jungle canopy. And it creates an instant sense of coolness when you get in here. I mean, it's humid, you can't get away from the humidity, but at least you don't get that intense heat. Uh, and that's, you know, can't be underestimated. It's really, really very good. And I've seen that on a lot of the islands, which are like not man-made, is you get that experience. So in here is the drawing room. So this is a room they've set up basically for people to hang out if they've got to check out their room, but uh, uh, their plane, their seaplane transfer hasn't come yet. So you get this huge space, so showers and uh, things to do and everything like that's catered. So that's like a really nice touch if you're, if you're not coming straight from your room to your transfer. All right, now down here we have the Iridium Spa. This is the first, I'd like to talk a little bit about the architecture here. So it's very, very interesting what they've done. 
in a lot of the places. There's really nice touches in the design in a lot of places. And uh, you can really see it from the air. But uh, just these lovely little domes, and I'll talk to you about a few of the finishes. There's a yoga hut down there. They do sunset, sunrise yoga. Uh, so the sunrise is right kind of ahead of us here. And down here is the spa, which has, other than your typical spa treatments, the blue hole experience, which is pretty special. But also the design of it is shaped basically like a giant lobster. So when you kind of, it's kind of like these pincers that come out on either side and this big lobster head that goes out to the blue, blue, uh, blue hole experience. Very, very cool. Let's go take a closer look. Hopefully I don't stack it on this adventure. Now, uh, I think it goes without saying, but the staff have been really quite nice, casual. Had some really good chats with all of them. Uh, but always on hand. All right. uh, for anything that you want, basically. To ridiculous hours, like you know, 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. or something. Ridiculous hour, you know, personal, they call, they call them a butler, I hate the term. Just to me to say something other than the way that that relationship is. Anyway, here's the Knickerbocker Villa. Now, that's where I'm actually staying. It was a fluky upgrade. So we'll we'll dive into that in a sec. We're going to the tour and I'm gonna to finish off in a room there and do a lap of the island. So down there we have the supply jetty. That's not such a great piece of the resort. Uh, a lot of contractors come in there and they're loud and they make a bit of a mess. They're like on the one dow point. I don't know what you can do about it, you need them. So, you're just gonna have to put up with it, I guess. And here's the dive center. This is where you're gonna do all your water sports. So like all your non-motorized is complimentary. All your motorized costs a fee. Do guided snorkel tours from here. Uh, sunset dolphin tour from here. Let's dive in and have a closer look at what the dive center offers. Okay, so all the staff stay on the island here, which I think is, is good. And they definitely, you know, I was speaking to a very, they, they consider them very staff members, they consider themselves family. And they're all in the middle of here. You don't hear a peep out of them, you wouldn't even know they were there. And then we've got this little um, fine jewelry shop over on this side, Ivar. Then on this side, we have to start having the two bedroom family villas. Now I have done a tour of these, which I'll show you a bit later in this video. Uh, 
But they've all been designed to look like the original kind of Maldivian fishing ships that used to come through here. So that's where the architectural inspiration comes from them. And it's a very unique look. Uh, kind of like the, the, the sharp angle on one side and open on the other. Uh, I really like it. It's very cool. And there's quite a few of these along here. So you've got some that are kind of beachy. They're a little bit over water. They're on the beach. Here's some over water ones further down. On the inside in here, you've got the most private buildings in the whole place. So these are the internal villas. So you still, they're, this, they're, they're the same experience as say the beach villas from what I can see. It's a big, tall roofed, pull out the front, but they're behind this wall. They're kind of gated off from everyone else. You can't see in from anywhere. It's very much more private experience for people who want that. That is where you get it. So it'd be different every single season, I guess, and conditions, but one of the cool things about these overwater villas over here is that there's been some decent, like, foot, foot and a half of waves just kind of rolling in ever since we got here, making this amazing sound, really giving you that overwater experience. Which you can see, if we don't stack it, yeah. Kind of rolling in here under the palm trees. Yeah, so it's a better look at the same. So same design as those ones I showed you before, but these ones are like right over the water. And like I said, I have done a tour of those. I have filmed it. So we'll jump into that. Brakes don't work on his bike, by the way, so <laughs> just to add to the uh, levels of difficulty here. All right, so that's the way that we're going to go in a sec, but I just want to show you down here because in here is the library, which is this awesome, like, conical shell shape all the way up. It's beautiful inside. Let's go take a look.
Okay, so now we're getting around to the main kind of, I guess, social areas. Uh, and that kind of intimacy that I was talking about because it's, it's a small island. So I think max, maximum start, like they said, you're usually gonna find about somewhere between 100 and 150 guests here. If it gets crazy, about 200. Uh, if everyone takes an extra room, you know. Sorry, an extra bed in their room. Uh, and that kind of creates a warmth and you get to see everyone all the time. There's a whole bunch of people going for a, let's go snorkel or something. So here's the Cargo. So Cargo is a really interesting restaurant uh, where the actual kitchen is built out of a piece of cargo that fell off the Titanic. Um, it's hence the name Cargo. But it's also uh, interesting that the guy who founded the St Regis uh, was on the Titanic and didn't make it. So extra piece of brand coolness there. Let's go have a look. Now our next stop down here is your kids centre. So again, uh, big on the architecture, big on the design, uh, and the kids have spent a lot of time down here. Very cool in the middle of the jungle. So let's go have a look at this rather cool place, which is named after the island, the Mooli. Or maybe it's the atoll for Mooley House. Let's go have a look. Now, directly opposite that, very handily, because the kids' clubs are right next to the kind of main space, we have, and I might ditch the, ditch the bike for this. One thing they do have is a lot of thick sand, which is nice, except that it makes it a little hard to ride. And strangely, I went up to this ladder, there's nothing up there. This is a big open space, I don't know if they'd ever do anything up there. But the stairs are kind of falling apart. There's a few places around here you'll notice Things do need a bit of maintenance. It's one of the curiosities. Like it's super luxe, there's no doubt about it. But then around the edges, there's definitely some work that needs to be done. I think maybe it's really affected by the elements. I don't know if they, they use these kind of like European 
design philosophies, but they don't really work in paradise. See out there, for example, the roof, but the door's just swollen. So now it's hitting the roof and scratched it. Uh, I've noticed that with the doors in the uh, house as well, which I'll show you later on. But anyway, that's your main restaurant. That's where you're gonna have your breakfasts. Um, you can have lunches in there as well. It's uh, great. One of the awesome things that they do here is that uh, breakfast includes, for everyone, well, I guess everyone on full board, uh, includes um, Bloody Marys, mimosas, and champagne. So you can come down here in the morning and have a couple of drinks to start your day off, which is quite friendly. Maybe it's Australian in me, but it's the best way to start a day. Definitely makes you feel instantly like you're on holiday. Uh, but there's plenty to eat, plenty of great options. Food quality is excellent. big giant main pool right so this space out here is lovely really good some hammocks over there in the trees this big huge pool with these little jets coming out of it in places lots of places to sit the towels it's right next to the food and then out there they've got an extraordinary extraordinary bar called the whale bar and out and it's 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 just a marvel to walk in and walk through it's just so wonderfully designed and it faces directly into the sunset. And you can go out there, there's a champagne ceremony every uh, evening uh, and like a bit of a DJ set and it's, some cocktails flow. It's a great, great place to kind of end your evening and you kind of look out there at the big sunset. But it's just a beautifully designed, thoughtful statement piece that uh, 
I've got a lot of respect and admiration for. They've done a great job there. There's another restaurant down here called the something and crust, crab and crust maybe. And uh, it's uh, another place where you can just eat, but it's a little less pompous than in there where it's all like, you know, not, well, not collared shirts, but you know, uh, a little bit finer. Where over here you can get away your swimwear or whatever. And it can, it's a much smaller menu, but it's still really nicely done. Obviously you your drinks and everything like that. You can probably see the hammock street there. So that's um, so you kind of got your main beach here, and as you can see, it's like not massive, but it's not a lot of people, so it does well. And everyone's got their bikes down here. And there's a little boutique shop in here. And if you walk up to the third story, so in there you got you know your sun cream and everything like that, as well as like rash vests and anything else you might need. If you go a little bit further up, there's a hell of a view from up there. This beautifully framed kind of I don't know more than 180, maybe 200, 270 degree. Oh, probably not 270, it's going a bit far, but yeah, a little degree view out over everything they've got to offer on this main beach, which is uh, definitely something to go and see. They're very loose sand. Makes it very hard to pedal. It's probably, I guess, I guess the, one of the side effects of having a natural island. I'd rather have the natural island, I guess. So that circles back around there towards where we started and the beach villas. I'll take you out to the overwaters, which have sunrise and sunset faces, facing the villas. There's a nice little wedge in here, by the way. I mean, it's not very big, but the kids are having heaps of fun just kind of jumping in these waves. And over there, there's what looks like some pretty good surf, but I haven't been game enough to paddle over there. It's got some new wild currents running through it. You can see it just kind of cross-waving a bit. Very interesting, most of the swell seems to come front onto the island and wraps both ways. So you get waves kind of colliding into each other. Look, on both ways, very interesting. Okay, so pretty much all these overwater villas are the same. Here's um, this cool sculpture, I really like it got a 3D effect, so whichever side you look at it, kind of feels 3D. Hey mate, just give you an idea, they're all pretty much exactly identical, one bedrooms. Again, I have gone in, I have filmed this.
Uh, I should talk about the house reef. So you can just swim off here, not very far, like 10 meters, and it just drops off the atoll and it's just filled with fish, stingrays, sharks, all the good stuff. How cool are these buggies, by the way? A little Ritz Carlton. Sorry, I just said the little St. Regis uh, logo on the front. Uh, yeah, and especially off the grand, the grand villa at the very end, which I'll show you in a sec, which is where all the super celebs stay, which has its own gym, its own spa, its own, you know, five bedrooms, I think they said. I asked, what are all the bedrooms for? And they go, that's for the, that's for the cook, their personal cook and their nanny and all the extras that come when you're that loaded. I do not have any of those. And if I dare call my wife any of those things, I'll get walloped across the head, very deservingly so. So there's this interesting space in the middle here, which they aren't currently using. And I couldn't quite work out why. So it's all fenced off. It looks like it's a swimming spot. There's hammocks over it. Uh, I'll see if I can find more information about that and I'll leave it in the comments. But uh, there's a couple of people snorkeling down there at the moment. But it, yeah, apparently off the end of this in particular, it's the best snorkeling. But the, we just went snorkeling off the, um, off the dive center and it was fantastic. So a huge barracuda came right up to us, it was awesome. So that's the John Jacob Astor Estate. Epic. Uh, yeah, and then the water villas then head off that way as well. Uh, so, see the waves breaking up there. So it's not kind of like a long reef in front of the water villas. Pretty much just like you jump off there's a little bit of space to see and do things but the beach the beach kind of seems to be the the, the, the most popular guy for people it has been quite windy while we've been here today's a bit better uh and it's such a small island there's only a few places you can kind of go to escape it but you know, really you breathe, the breeze is kind of your best friend anyway, because it's so damn hot. You can see here, so there's quite a bit of maintenance going on, I think, in bits and pieces. I don't know if it's a post-COVID thing because the Maldives stayed open during COVID for the most part. So I don't know how Bali tourism was affected compared to other parts of the world. They do seem to be, you know, fixing things here and there. And again, as I was talking to you before, like this shingle look is awesome but there's so many places where the shingles are kind of falling off. So I do feel like potentially they went for this wicked, awesome design that's very appealing to Europeans, potentially, maybe the Chinese, it's very exotic, uh, but maybe not the best for the climate. That's just my two cents. Uh, because, yeah, everything, everything has a luxury bent to it but then just on the edges everything's kind of struggling a little bit so just interesting it hasn't affected our stay but definitely if you're looking for a super modern villa and a super modern experience inside where it's all pristine and white and very light uh, this isn't this isn't that type of place here's that statue again And there's that whale bar, how good is it? So good, a masterpiece. And you can see over here, this is the beach villa side of the island where they a little more sand to play with. You've got this little break wall that they've built in to try and protect, prevent the sand from eroding. And uh, so if you, if you, I think the beach villa actually would be quite appealing to a lot of people in this particular resort. I and mean, the overwater is the one you want, I guess, because it's the it's the dream, it's the it's the picture in your mind, it's it's the exotic, and it's awesome. Don't get me wrong, the beach villas are fantastic. Sorry, the overwater villas are fantastic, uh, but the beach villas here probably have a nicer swim in front of them, and obviously they're very central. You can hear the beach villas here. So these are all one bedroom. So one bedroom on this side, two bedroom on the other side.
And then you can go through there to get to the kids club. There's also an organic garden in there where you're gonna see some of the stuff that they then put on your plate later in the day. And I do love riding on these sandy roads. A shortcut through the island there. There's one of the estates down there. So it's similar to the one that we're staying in. So there's a, we're in a two bedroom, there's another two bedroom and there's a three bedroom as well. But I'll show you that in a second. I just want to ride around to where my villa is or where we started. So you can basically get a feel for how big the island is. That's the staff quarters there that we're already coming back around again. So as you can see, it's, I don't know how big the loop is, but it couldn't be much longer than a kilometre. A lot of people have been jogging it as exercise. Here is a gym uh, as well, which uh, is in the Vol Volumi house. Um, uh, which I'm sure, oh, that's reception. That's reception, by the way. Not that I've ever had a need to go there. Right, and that's where we came in. That's the seaplane launch place. So yeah, there is a gym as well. Uh, very strange gym actually, super strange gym. Just with the plant life in the middle, it's kind of cool, but it kind of also impacts the space for stretching and all that kind of stuff. Here we go. Let's jump in and have a look at Knickerbocker Villa. All right, so here we are in the room that I'm staying in with my family, which is the Knickerbocker Villa. Now, it's interesting how we ended up here because we weren't supposed to be in this room. We were supposed to be in one of the two bedroom uh, overwater villas. But just before we got here, something went wrong and they had to do some maintenance on it. And so they upgraded us to this, the Knickerbocker Villa. And the Knickerbocker Villa, is one of three premium family suites that are around the island, but obviously not the type of stay that most people are probably gonna stay in. They're probably gonna stay in overwater villas or in the two bedroom beach villas or the two bedroom overwater villas. So I have gone through and I have done filming of those alternative accommodation options. So I will take you through that after this, but this is the one we actually slept in. So even though it's the one you're probably not gonna end up being in, a lot of the finishings, a lot of the way it's built, a lot of the design elements uh, are definitely the same between all of the, all the rooms. So I'm gonna take you through a tour of what we experienced here. Uh, and so as you come into our estate, uh, you should be able to see as soon as you walk in the opulence of it. So obviously this is, this is trying to be something bigger and better than the standard villas, and it certainly is. Now as you walk through the main entrance here, you're going to notice quite a loud sound, that's the air conditioning. So I, was, I wanted to bring this up because even though it's really loud, it's all at the back end of this villa which is great because basically even though it's making a hell of a lot of noise as it's trying to keep this in huge space uh, really cool and it does a fantastic job, it, uh, you can't hear it. And that's really important. I love the fact that they've, they've thought about that in the design. So you've got a little bike rack out the side here. All the villas have these and you'll all get supplied with bikes. They've got kids sized bikes and they've got adult sized bikes, easily adjustable seating. So it's quite easy to get it to where you want to. Although it's a very small island anyway, you can walk everywhere you want to, even though you can, we've been using the bikes. So come in. Love the welcome mat. You know, and this is a place that's very strong on its brand. Brand is a big part of the story here. So you probably already realize just walking in here, just uh, uh, the sense of scale in this villa. Now, all the colour schemes, the, uh, the artistry, the kind of thick black metal, stone, all that kind of stuff is consistent across all the villas. So this is the look they're going for. And uh, it's a very interesting uh, option for 2024. This was built in 2016, so not that not old ago. 
not that long ago, but it's a very kind of um, European feel in my opinion. It's not kind of on that uh, modern tip that we see in Australia where it's a lot more white, very non-obvious materials, that kind of thing. This is very much more uh, darker colors, thicker metals, thicker materials. Uh, so it's a very different feel. Uh, and that just simply might not be your taste. I don't think it's necessarily positive or negative, it's just what you're up for. Uh, but the overall feeling is of something that's a little bit more, not rustic, but just a little bit more, yeah, European, a little less modern in the feel. Uh, but still, as you can see, so much space. So into the main living space here. And we've got a little kind of like library study, reading, hanging out nook over the side here. Uh, you'll see on all these little bits of artwork all over the place. Now I was speaking to uh, some of the management staff here and they're telling me this is all built out of recycled material. So it's all, sorry, the recycled stuff that's washed up on the shore and turned it into art, which I think is really cool. Uh, a couple of books. The Atlas is really cool. Now over here on this side, we've got a bit of a kitchen area. So a quite a large bench space, uh, full pantry. Now in this particular resort, it's different in every particular resort. In this particular resort, all you've got is your coffees and your water and your tea. That's the only thing that's complimentary here. Everything else is, is gonna cost you extra. So soft drinks, even if you're on full board or anything like that, uh, which is a bit weird to me. If you're on full board, why isn't it included? Uh, like I can have them as much as I want when I go to the meals, but I can't have the Sprite out of there. It's a little bit weird and it's a bit difficult with the kids. Uh, some food options up here, all of this stuff, that's all extra. Uh, but they've got the coffee, you've got a little Nespresso machine here. Uh, there's actually, if you come around here, if you have a look around this side, they've actually got like pull out fridges and enough stuff to really settle in here for a while if you want to live here for like a month or something. Uh, there's even an ice making machine, a permanent ice making machine over here that we have to turn off because it was so loud and we didn't need the ice making ice and in here like a whole little separate kind of kitchen with stove oven microwave fridge everything so i don't you know for, for the not for the vast majority of people that are just coming here for a bit of a holiday and and uh, eating at the restaurant so I, I don't know what you would use this for i potentially you'd have guests staying here where they cook stuff in-house i think that's potentially what it's for people potentially celebrities something like that who don't want to be in a public space and we come through here this big open room. So everything is kind of operated through an iPad. Uh, so there's pros and cons to that. So the first night we got here and all the lights, all the blinds, the TV, everything is, is working through the iPad. And we spent a lot of time trying to work out how to turn the lights off and everything like that. There are manual switches here and there. It's a bit hard to work out. Once you get your mind around it, it's all right. Uh, but they've got sound system built into the TV here. They've got uh, a couple of local channels. The reception has been good on the local channels, like movie, a couple of movie channels, a lot of sport channels, some news channels, uh, but you can just go onto the uh, internet TV and, and, and YouTube and Netflix, that type of thing, uh, or sync your own device to it as well if you want to have an uh, experience watching the TV. I will say that the internet, internet at the St. Regis is very poor. Uh, it's about five megabits a second um, is going to be your standard internet rate, uh, which is enough to check emails, but not much else. I was trying to browse around websites. I couldn't actually do it. I ended up getting in touch with them and I ended up uh, bumping it up 10, which was enough for me to do a little bit of work. But yeah, the internet is consistent around the resort, just not very fast. Something to keep in mind if you plan on doing any work here. I, I brought it up when they said to me, oh, look, you know, most of our guests don't care because they're not here to do any work. And I, okay, you know, that, that's, you probably don't want to come here to work. Uh, but that was my experience with it all. So yeah, nice high roof, good air con vents up here, like I said, keeps the place very, very cool. One of the interesting things about this entire build is it's like, it's so ornate and it's so massive, got this huge chandelier, really great couches, beautiful finishings everywhere, the art everywhere, all this kind of stuff. And in fact, even if you look behind you here, there's this you know, really lovely sculpture, it looks a lot like Australia to me. That's what I see when I see it, uh, each to their own. But, uh, but by the same token, you've got to cut these like panel, really thin panel walls and engineered floating floors as opposed to hardwood, which dips in places, you know? So you walk around, it dips in places. And as you walk around the whole entire resort, you notice a bit of this, there's a little bit of 
like shingles falling off the roof and and you know the steps next to the main there's a, there's a staircase that goes up next to the main restaurant. I walked up it and there's a fair few steps that were completely loose. There's tiles in the in the pool which are like off skews. It's weird. It's like this. It's like this. It's, it's it's luxury and it's and it's awesome. But then there's these little weird blemishes everywhere. I don't know. Maybe it's the brand. Maybe that's what they're going for. It's kind of like rustic luxury. I don't know. Let's have a look through here. So you got this connecting room. I don't know if these are originally two separate villas potentially and they've joined them together. Because this is pretty this is pretty typical design in this room of the uh, other beach villas that I've experienced. But if you come through here, this beautiful high ceiling with these amazing curtains that are all remote control like remote controls. So you push a button and they just go and just close in and close out like this. It's beautiful. Couple of nice big beds in here. Uh, it's my daughter's birthday today and they've dressed it all up. We just got back here from a snorkeling trip and, and, and they've done a nice little happy birthday thing here. I love, I love, I love the, this, what they do with the, with the leaves and the, and the reeds and they just love it. Now this is the third bed. My eight year old only fits in it just. And it's the couch. There's not a mattress. So considering all the space, they really should step it up to roll-ins, like just, just a, just a roll-in proper mattress on a proper bed. Uh, but yeah, my h roll -in just fit in it and it's not the world's most comfortable place to sleep. The beds themselves are fantastic, uh, but this seems to me to be unnecessary considering the amount of space. Uh, I did want to bring your attention to this over here. Again, kind of talks to my, uh, my point about it being this amazing sense of luxury, but at the same time, just jaw dropping thing. If you have a look over here, so that's fully closed right now. And can you see, you can probably see like there's, there's actually a huge gap all the way down and all the doors are like this, especially around the lock, all right? So you can't actually seal it. That's as sealed as it gets the whole way around. And it's even up here and uh, not so much on these doors, but on the doors in the other room, it's also a big gap here as well. <sighs> I was initially very worried about mosquitoes being an issue getting in here. We haven't really encountered too many problems with mosquitoes getting in, but obviously the noise gets in. Um, and most of the time that's lapping waves, it's beautiful. But uh, as I'll go to in a little sec, we had, we, where this particular room is, there's been other noises we've had to deal with. So I, I, it's a bit weird to me that it doesn't seal. And I think, my, my, my guess is that it's because they've built it all out of this kind of wood that is really susceptible to expansion and in, in the water and the moisture and it just doesn't close anymore. But none of them do, so a bit weird. Um, all the blinds are automatic. Another TV in this room, another large size TV in this room, including built-in speaker, so that's good. It's such a distant space as well that the kids have been able to kind of have their own little world. They've even got their little own little buttery, uh, butler pantry as well. So I'll take you upstairs to the master suite. Oh, actually, no, I forgot. Before we do that, in the bathroom. Amazing bathroom. So look at this. Isn't this great? So the bathrooms are particularly nice. Uh, so as you can probably see, and I'll show you upstairs, we're looking, have a look in here, you'll see they've done happy birthday in the bathtub as well, which is really, really lovely. So this is the, not the main bathroom, uh, believe it or not. So his and hers effectively, um, space for basin, all the, all your, all, everything you require is provisioned for you, obviously. Uh, you've got a shower space over here and a toilet space behind you with exactly the same design. So you can talk about this, this thick black metal with the glass. I love the glass. I'm not so cool on the big black thick metal. Uh, it's not just not my personal taste. But Rainmaker in there as well as a, as a, as a hand shower. And that's going to give you a lot of good pressure as well. Uh, so you're going to be able to uh, see, you can feel a lot of that pressure in there. And big, nice open room that goes right up to a kind of a skylight. I really love this as well. I take you upstairs, got an even nicer one upstairs. Big bath, everything you could dream of. And there's an outdoor shower on the bottom level as well, uh, which you can access through a side door here. Now, I love that there's an outdoor shower. I use it all the time. I probably use it more than the indoor shower, to be honest. It's just a bit of a shame that it's only out the back because you need it out the front. 
that's where you're swimming in a pool, that's where you're coming in off the beach, that's where you're getting the sand on your feet, that's where you want to rinse off just quickly and go inside the house, but instead you've got to trek around, come in here, do it here, then trek back around, especially if these doors are all locked up and closed. Uh, so I do wish they'd just put one share up the front as well, but it's awesome that they have the space. Okay, so, yeah, bathrooms are really nice. Stone all the way up the, up the walls as well, which is great. All right, let's have a look upstairs. So as you can see, big place. Cool towels. So there's a storage space underneath the stairs, which is kind of handy to get bags and stuff out of the way. And you have this big kind of staircase that comes up, which is really opulent and lovely, but as I was saying, it's kind of got this weird panel material. It's obviously the look. It hasn't been sealed on the sides. It's just, just curious, yeah. My first St. Regis experience. I don't know if this is typical of the brand, but um, I do like the chandelier. And so up here is really lovely. So this is the master. So you got, kind of got your own, another, another little, Butler's pantry over here, all your bits and pieces. And if you come through, beautiful, beautiful master. Bright, vibrant, follows the same kind of decor. Uh, still iPad controlled, but what a beautiful space. Like I said before, the bed's incredibly comfortable. Again, I've noticed this in a few places right now. Very, very nice pillows, but only the two versions of the same variant. They're both pretty much just soft, soft medium. So you kind of like have to work around that a little bit. Big cool TV with a sound system built in. So it's a third TV in this particular apartment. Lovely top little villa here. Oh, sorry, top balcony. Looking out over the ocean. Good view. I think that's pretty, pretty decent view for a beach villa. Uh, and this is kind of sunrise facing, so it's been quite nice in the mornings. Little bit of little bit of shelter. It does feel does feel definitely feel private. Uh, but I'll take you down to the beach in a second. There's positive and negatives to this particular location on the island. I really like this little visual they've got going on over here. Very nice. Uh, and again, more sculptures, more little places, sitting nooks, just so much space and and and, and lovely little details everywhere. Uh, just a very specific type of flavour. And through here, we've got a pretty decent walk-in wardrobe with enough space for a couple to kind of sell out on both sides. And through here, an even more, not more opulent bathroom for the main, following a very similar visual pattern to downstairs and the rest of the villas in the location. If you come through all the way through, you'll see nice big beautiful bathtub all the amenities that you could wash, wish, wish for, large basins, mirrors, lights. I love this uh, the kind of sunken chandelier effect they've got going up here. It's fantastic, really, really nice. And that kind of same kind of glass see-through build on both the shower and the toilet, which is kind of cool and nice, but by the same token, uh, does mean that there's no privacy if you want to go to the toilet and someone else is in the room, brushing their teeth or doing whatever. Now out here there's this balcony, which doesn't seem to serve much of a purpose. You can't look out anywhere. Uh, there is an outdoor shower out here. I'm not really sure what it was for, or what it was originally used for, other than the fact that you can open it up and have this kind of breezy space uh, into, your, your, if you wanna have a nice long, cool bathroom. All right, so let's have a quick look downstairs at the backyard. I mean, it's been fantastic staying here. It's been really good with the kids. I've got very, two very distinct spaces. Uh, it's been allowed them, us to put them to bed and, and for them to be able to kind of go to sleep while we stayed up and watched a bit of TV or talked or done a bit of work, whatever we've got to do. I love this as well. It's beautiful, isn't it? Beautiful feel. Okay, and I'll just take out the front. 
So again here, you can, you can, you'll see that this doesn't close fully. And you can probably, if you look down there as well to the side, you'll see it's just not sealed. It's just, yeah, I feel like they must just went with the wrong, wrong material here. They probably should have gone for metal. And then out here, it's a particularly nice day today as well. You've got this fantastic pool, huge pool. Like you can do laps in that. Really, really nice. Plentiful amount of very soft cushioned sun lounges for everyone to hang out on. There's actually down here as well, there's a spa. So you can push a button and get a whole bunch of bubbles in there. And it's all tiled as well, which is primo. Very nice, they've done a fantastic job out here. It's a lovely place to be. And if we walk down past all my wet costumes, <laughs> like I said, we just went down to uh, snorkel because the house reef is really good. Saw some big sharks, um, some a devil rays, and uh, it's a big stingrays, and a, a huge barracuda came right up to us. It was awesome. Yeah, so lovely infinity pool. And then a little private beach. Now all of the beach villas, they all have their own little private beach. And the beach villa side at this particular time of year anyway, which is July, was sheltered from the wind and the waves. It's very, very nice. But it obviously swings around seasonally. Uh, the family, family villas that are on the over water side, they don't have much of a private beach. A little bit of sand on some of them. Other ones are just right directly over the water. But the main beach has plenty of sand anyway. This, this particular, the Knickerbocker has heaps of space. But if you come down here, You've got the spa on that side, which has been perfectly fine. But over here, you've got the supply jetty. And if you come over and have a look. Over here, you've got the supply jetty. So this is in the, I guess this is probably the south corner, the most south corner of the island. And they've got to have one, right? And it's a small island, but it happens to be kind of in the middle of, um, yeah, the Knickerbocker, but also the family estates, which are just, just on the other side, the family villas. Uh, and there's been a fair bit of noise from there. And because the doors don't seal, you can really hear it inside. So like uh, supply, can, supply ships, revving their engines, the, the water sports is right there as well, jet ski repairs, all that kind of stuff. So, and that, yeah, so all of that kind of stuff's been going on just through here and making a bit of noise. So that's just something to consider that you might want to maybe venture to the other side of the island. The overwaters are miles from here, so they're fine. All right. Well, there we go, there's an exhaustive tour and a review of the Knickerbocker. Uh, definitely a curious room, a curious stay, but the opulence uh, and the experience overall has been really, really good. I just really wanted to throw this into the review. Apologize, I don't have my mic on me, but I've just been having breakfast at the St. Regis and I just enjoyed a really nice meal and a couple of mimosa, champagne, and orange juices. And now I'm sitting here with the most spectacular view. Just feeling fantastic. And this is, this is where this resort really shines right now. So good. So there we go guys, that's my exhaustive tour of the St. Regis Maldives Resort and uh, my full review. Uh, here I am standing in front of the Knickerbocker, which is one of the premium villas, but as I've gone through in this review, uh, there's plenty of options beyond this one which might better fit you and your situation. My overall feeling in this resort is kind of... It's a bit... I don't know how to put it into words really because it's... it's there's so much to like about it. You know, it's like... It's, it's very small, easy to get around, very uh, private, it's very selective like there's only about 150 people here at the moment in the whole entire island not including the staff so it's very very uh luxury in that regard uh the st regis brand obviously carries a lot of weight and we see that in the architecture that we see around this place we see it in the, the quality of the staff and how well that experience has been communicating with them getting help when we needed it talking to them uh in the quality of the food uh i love the i love the whale bar i, I love the that, that open beach and that, that kind of beautiful opulent main restaurant and the way it all works in there. And, and so there's, there's so much to like it. The house reef is excellent. Just being able to just like literally just swim 
50 metres off here, and all of a sudden you're looking at sharks and stingrays and barracudas and all this incredible stuff that we've seen out there. So there's so many parts to it which are uh, extremely easy to recommend. But there are negatives as well. You know, it's not a modern field. It's a very kind of thick European old school feel about the way that the decor has been done. Uh, the, the fact that you have to fly in here by seaplane is going to add an added cost to a lot of people. The fact that a lot of the places around here do need a bit of maintenance. There's, there's little bits of work here and there. There's parts that, are, that, that you can know straight away, oh, this is getting a little bit, how you're doing? Uh, it needs a bit of work. Uh, you have this extraordinarily luxury quality material on one side and you look slightly at the side and it's like the direct opposite of that. That kind of interesting mix uh, caught me off guard. I wasn't expecting that. I was expecting probably that like super primo luxury finish the whole way through it. And it's not like that. It's kind of more like, it's, it's, so much of it is more about this little piece of paradise which you're just sharing with such a small group of people. Uh, more than it is just like next level finishes everywhere and next level quality to every single piece of the, um, the, the, the the, the, the workmanship and the furnishings because in places it just needs a bit of work. So uh, yeah, it's kind of interesting in that regard, absolutely. Coming here with a family, look, we've had a really good time. There's a bunch of families on the island at the same time we are. Uh, not too many English speaking kids, unfortunately. So our kids have, have struggled to kind of gel. The kids club has a plenty to do, but it's, 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 it's designed in a way that's, it's not form over function, but it's not like, there's not zip lines and waterworks and all that kind of stuff going on. It's a bit more like hands-on and creative and explorative and, and, and stuff like that. So again, not a pro, not a con, just what type of experience are you looking for? Uh, the fact that the island's so small, it's really easy for the kids to get places. That, 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 that main beach with the hammocks and the, and the big infinity pool and the waves lapping in and the house reef right there definitely helps make it excellent for kids. And we've all had a really, really good time and there's no doubt about it. And it was nice that for my daughter's birthday, they did a couple of little special things as well to make her feel like it was a great day for her as well. So definitely, uh, I think that you're fine here as a family. Uh, I think because of how intimate it is uh, and the fact that it's a natural island as well helps with that because this, this growth that you get on this natural island uh, adds an extra element of coolness. It doesn't get as hot on the inside, which allows for more activity. There's the tennis court, there's the ping pong tables, pool tables, there's lots of little things to do and you don't have to go miles to get to it. So that's definitely a positive as well. So yeah, definitely enjoyed my time at St. Regis uh, in the Maldives. Is it, is it uh, exactly what I expected? It's not, uh, as I've gone through, uh, but that doesn't mean it hasn't been a wonderful experience. So there you go, that's, uh, that's my exhaustive tour of the St. Regis Maldives and my review. Thank you very much for watching. Make sure you keep an eye on the channel because I am doing a review of eight different resorts on this trip. So there's going to be lots of comparison points and lots of things to consider because uh, they all seem to offer something quite special and quite unique, which is great. Uh, so check those out. Until next time, get back on the road. Yeah.